at the crap, the crap, the crap. It's Beaver Kool-Aid. Beaver Kool-Aid. John Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew Bennett. Beaver Kool-Aid. Three dudes talking about whatever the hell they want. It's narcissistic. Check it, check it, check it. Check it out. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being self-absorbed. It's Beaver Kool-Aid with Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew. This friend of mine says, uh, get this hot chick, get this you know girl to go out and do these uh, goofy things for you on the street, and you guys can play it back on Beaver Kool-Aid, and you know maybe get her to go out in a bikini or something and interview people. I was like, you okay, are yeah. living in a fantasy. That's There's a nobody fantasy that other. And first of all, most people that are young and hot or want to work for Google, not for Beaver Kool-Aid. So, yeah. But if you're out there and you want to come do some uh, goofy news stories for us wearing a bikini, we're, uh, we're accepting applications right now. Drew, you're, mm-hmm, our, HR, yeah. you're our HR guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, direct uh, all of those pictures to me. <laughs> absolutely no problem getting any of those people. Yeah. And it's so, so easy. So, so easy. Yeah, it, you know, it probably would be, would be easier if it was television. Yeah, maybe. Because they can at least uh, get their face shown in there. But so, in radio, what's the big deal? I can I get on Skype. It's yeah. like we are. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, you know, I'm supposed to get out and talk to people for what? <laughs> they don't have anything to give you because Lloyd sold it all at his garage sale. They, got yeah. to, they get to work with John Lyle, the famous John Lyle. No, I can I can uh, help you with your career. Yeah. You know, I can mentor you. I see that casting couch you got back there in the library in the background there. So. Yeah, I wish you know, it was to... We could uh, we could give a shit, but somebody already took one of those in Lloyd's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey you know Pepsi's sponsoring the show this week. We can't have that Coca Cola being shown. Yeah, here, that may be doing? a perk, though. Yeah, that may be a perk that if uh, you know you, we can't pay you, but in the powder room. Yeah, open. you can go right straight to the powder room. You know, it's where we all sit around and take a crap for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. We do yeah. talk about it enough. I guarantee yeah. it would get more views than what we're getting right now. So you know, I think I, if the guy had been really, the guy had really been a forward thinker, what he would have done is bought maybe your uh, your Christmas tree or Playboy <laughs> bunny or Crown air freshener from your garage sale, and then gone in there with the uh, into the powder room with that. You know, it's I like, did. You know, I did mistaken. have a person that took a, a box of Christmas lights home. <laughs> I was shocked. I gave him that. That's so. a good idea. They That's a. Good- <laughs> <laughs> hey, go to somebody's garage sale and buy something and then go into their bathroom and use it. Yeah, there you go. Hey, uh, yeah, That's we need that. Idea. Let me see. I got, you got a box of Crown Air Fresheners? Cool. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I need. Mind if I use your, use your bathroom? <laughs> I want to see how good they work. <laughs> going to put them to use right here. It's Beaver Kool-Aid. Beaver Kool-Aid. Well, uh, you know, the last show we talked about North Carolina a lot in, in our tribute to Goober. And uh, North Carolina is all in the news today, The uh, all up in arms. John brought this up briefly about the, uh, the ban on gay marriages. And, of course, uh, the vote is in. North Carolina has now banned gay marriages. And um, that's not a big shocker, huh? Uh, I didn't think it was because, as I told you before, you know, North Carolina has some parallels with Texas. You get outside of the urban areas. And uh, this is, you know, it's to me, it's kind of a backward territory. Uh, And people, you know, may resent me describing as backward, but it's like that. The rural people are not exactly progressive. Um, And those are the people that always feel threatened by any social progression, it seems like. But uh, in North Carolina, the problem is, is that out of all the different urban areas, I think there's only maybe like one that's progressive. Yeah. And other than that, they're, they're not very progressive. I mean, uh, Charlotte's not all that progressive. Greensboro, Winston-Salem High Point isn't progressive. It's just Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. Yeah. Uh, but the thing about the North Carolina <clears throat> Amendment to the Constitution is that it, it basically is it's not just just saying marriage is between a man and a woman. It, it's basically now that you that, that the Constitution is going to pre- prevent any recognition of any civil union whatsoever. So yeah. they, they I read a poll yesterday before the, uh, you know, the voting was over with that said almost 50 percent of the people didn't understand the amendment. They didn't understand what it was truly banning. They just they just want to make sure no queers were going to be able to marry. OK. We don't want any queers. We don't want queers, you know, going down the aisle in our churches. We don't want queers on top of a wedding cake. We don't want any of that crap because, you know, people loving one another 
I don't want that crap because I feel threatened and my children feel threatened and we don't need queers and their kids and our schools and our neighborhoods. You know, that's that. Keep them in the salons where they belong. <laughs> Let them use, uh, you know, pastel paint colors. Yeah, that's all right. But keep the keep the queers away from uh, from where I live in my institutions. So, I you know, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but does this uh, this amendment passing mean it can means it can never be brought up again? Or is it, is it a done deal? Yeah, this or? is pretty much when you make an amendment to the Constitution, it's a pretty heavy thing. That's yeah. done. So no repeals yeah, so, coming and, up. Uh, so now I think that's uh, North Carolina is not alone. I mean, there's I think there's 29 states now that have done this. It's either 29 or this makes it 30 or this. I think makes it's it 31 is the total I read. 31 total. Well, good for you, Lloyd. Yeah. And Lloyd has the total. Thank you. And the total is <laughs> 31. That, come, one. that comes from Rachel Maddox's tweet today. That's the only reason I know that. So okay. and, I didn't know. But what, the, followed, funniest, uh, the funniest, tweets, the funniest tweet I saw was, um, it's like, hey, North Carolina, we hate your, uh, your bands almost as much as your barbecue. So I was a little you. offended about that. That hurts. That's, that's because you put call. That's because you put coleslaw <laughs> on the fucking barbecue. That you got it right, pal. Dumbest because thing pork. in the world. Because it's pork. It's right. not your dried out brisket. It's none of that. <laughs> I mean, that's the dumbest thing in the world. Coleslaw goes on hot dogs. Yeah. Coleslaw oh. goes on on barbecued pork. Yeah. That's, well, a, that's a that's that a wonderful combination. That settles it. Both of you were fucked in the head. <laughs> I, I was, <laughs> fine. I was yeah, fine, suspect fine. of it. And now I've confirmed it. Well, right. What, okay. All right. Fine. If you don't have any, if you don't have any vinegar man. on your barbecue, you're you're lo- you're missing out, man. You're That's missing sad. out. And you may not put coleslaw on. You put po- coleslaw on the on the pulled pork sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. But There's a difference there. Not on the plate. Not on the plate. You don't sit there and mix it all together. That's that's only for the sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing else. We need to get. So, yeah. I mean, I. I we always say, well, once again, you know, there's there's a reason I don't live in North Carolina. Of course, I don't know why the hell I'm here in Texas either. But yeah. uh, I, the one thing I've always liked about Texas versus being from one of the original 13, one of the things that drove me out is that um, Texas embraces eccentricity. And I always liked that. I mean, I, and I don't know if it if it's, uh, embraces eccentricity as much as it once did, but I always liked that where you could come here and be an odd wad. And you wouldn't you weren't necessarily an outcast. You know, yeah. you could be embraced by people. And I and I I like that kind of spirit. I mean, just look at some of the art in this uh, in this day. Look at some of the whacked out personalities. Say like a kinky Friedman. Yeah. Yeah. Can run for governor. I mean, you just uh, there's some uh, and musically and, it, you know, and the guy that had the Cadillacs buried in the ground up there in Amarillo. Or oh, whatever yeah. the hell it was. And Stanley Marsh. Yeah, I mean, just uh, strange stuff, and I, I like that. They embrace eccentricity. Where I always felt like I was getting forced out like a bad pimple or a bad whitehead. I was like a whitehead <laughs> in North Carolina, and society was just trying to freaking squeeze me out, pop me, and flick me off. I think Texas is is welcoming of that, as long as you don't put coleslaw on your barbecue. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> right back to that. I just want you to. I want you to to snorkel my throbbing Travolta. <laughs> That's what I want you to do. <laughs> so who do you think really kind of led the pack in Texas? I mean, you think Willie was kind of the poster child for, uh, you know, that. What, uh, eccentricity? Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, uh, was it way before oh. him or was he the one yeah, that kind of. Yeah, like I said the other day, I mean, Texas was a place where all these people came. A lot of states are like that, you know, and this, it, you know, when you go west, it's all these people who were running from the law. Yeah. who are broke, who are, you know, you get a weird mix of people in, and that's what we had here. Yeah. I think the people who defended, uh, you know, Texas in the beginning, m- most of those people were eccentric, you know, oddballs that found themselves in Texas. You talk I mean, about all it, those it, saps it, who got killed at the Alamo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think Davy Crockett it was, uh, you know, kind of an eccentric guy, right? Uh, finds himself in... In Texas, and uh, so I think those I think those roots, uh, you know, are deep. You know, the, yeah, there are a lot of people like that because you got to be screwed in the head to come over from Europe, come from Germany, move out into the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know, and uh, build your little stone house and defend it against Native Americans, and uh, there you are all by yourself, ready to be uh, to be killed, burned, 
everyone raped, captured, do whatever. That's that's crazy. That's nuts, yeah. right? Yeah. And nobody could wear a coonskin hat better than David Bowie. I mean, uh, David Crockett. David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw David Bowie wear one. <laughs> the great. You know, um, the great white knight, <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> the Julio Cesar Chavez fight here against yeah. Pinel Whitaker. And Don King came into town. And Don King came into town to, pro to, to promote this fight, right? And there was this great picture in the newspaper. It was Don King wearing a coonskin cap. Oh. And uh, that was, to me, one of the best photographs I've ever seen in my life. I don't even and, know I got uh, it on that hair. I used to have it on the back of this gong. Yeah. But it got torn off. But that's what I mean. It was the coonskin cap with the hair, the whole deal. He was literally selling it. And uh, it was a tremendous look. I, I mean, like it. Who knows? I mean, maybe the gimme cap, the ball caps. What if they didn't catch on? And right now Drew was wearing a, a cooner. I would love it, man. I was thinking about getting one to cover up my bald spot. You know, I see. Sorry. I can wear that coon skin with a little tail hanging down in the back. Maybe. Hey, well, you know what? Since everybody wants to flip their lid around backwards, maybe that would be the way the tail would hang down the, your face. Right over my nose. Yeah. You hang down that way to, you know, be guy uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Otherwise, I, I don't understand. But, you know, I don't understand what the purpose serves. I understand if I'm a catcher and I got to, you know. <laughs> flip it around or something but otherwise i don't understand wearing a cap backwards it, you know i don't i don't get I, that i remember the first time my parents took me to the alamo and we went and toured and they had the little gift shop uh i bought myself um a david bowie knife have you ever have you seen those the david bowie david knives? Bowie knife. how yeah. about a jim bowie knife come a jim on. bowie come on yeah, let's get it David all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's with yeah. You're just checking with you, isn't yeah, it? I know. I, know. I thought maybe you bought one of those big-ass Texas pencils. You know, those... <laughs> Nothing says the Alamo like a big-ass pencil. It's Beaver Kool-Aid. Beaver Kool-Aid. Uh, did you guys see the, um, you know, this is pretty cool, this um, Al-Qaeda in Yemen deal. Yeah. Where they uh, where, where we had our double agent, our yeah. double-not spy, our guy that... Uh, now, I don't understand when they talk about this latest underwear bomb. How come everybody has to know about this? Wouldn't it be better if no one, if this thing didn't go public and they didn't say anything about it? So now, did they ever say when this guy started being an informant for the CIA? I mean, was it, was it uh, during well, no, which, which regime? Because I, I sure hope it came under Bush's regime, either senior or junior. They're not talking much about it. They really aren't. They, they, they're they saying, hey, you know, we're not going to talk much about him. Uh, we're not going to say um, – they, they say that he was a part of, a, of an allied CIA, um, you know, department overseas. That's the only thing they're going to say about it. You know the conspiracists are going to have a field day with this one. I mean, they're going to take this back pre-9-11. I guarantee you that this guy was there. This was, you know, this was all pre-9-11, led up to 9-11. I can hear well, Alex Jones show uh, right now is going to be great. I can't wait to hear it. No, they, they, you know, you have an allied uh, service that sticks him in there, and then uh, you know he's going to be the guy that detonates it. He's going to wear the wear the chonis, <laughs> and um, and then you know he spirits out the device. I think that's great. And, and right, you know, right now he's probably we probably said you know thank you so much for all that, and I know that you have to worry about your life now. You know, here here millions of dollars uh, yeah. go and relax. Poor guy. Go and relax somewhere. So I think that's I, great. But uh, I like how everybody, once again, they go crazy on this thing. They go, we have to protect our country from all these different threats. And I'm thinking, well, how come you can't uh, protect us from obesity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you have all these diseases. You have all these different things that take down far more people. And we spend ungodly sums of money to try to protect us from these terrorist threats. I mean, they said before that how much did the whole 9-11 thing cost? For Al Qaeda, was it uh, was it you know half a million dollars? I mean, something that it wasn't incredible, and now we spent over a trillion dollars in response to that action. Wow! I mean, it's 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 absolutely incredible. And the latest survey says twenty seven only twenty seven percent of uh, of U.S. citizens are those who are willing to answer somebody taking a survey uh, support <laughs> the uh, the action uh, the current action in Afghanistan. Everybody says Al. Well, well, you know, it, I don't get it either. I don't get, uh, I thought we were supposed to go in there, blow the hell out of, uh, of, of Afghanistan, and then we we're going to rebuild it. We we're going to get rid of the Taliban, then we we're going to rebuild it, put in some strip centers and stuff like that, and get the hell out so we weren't in there like the Soviet Union was.
Well, everybody wants to leave because we got the guy that this, we got the guy they wanted. You know, we killed him this year. I think so they wanted to get out before Bin Laden was oh, ever yeah. killed. <clears throat> you know, I, there was nothing to rebuild, it, though. It's all rocks and just jungle. Yeah, we yeah. don't need to be in Afghanistan. We need to be in Pakistan. <laughs> They're the ones with a nuclear weapon. Yeah, we need to be there. It's just kind of, but no one supports this action, and yet these, uh, you know, the presidential candidates aren't talking about it. You still have the Barack Obama timeline for getting out. Been there far too long. You look at uh, the effect on the military from these actions. No way, nobody talks about Iraq anymore. Everybody wanted to drop that and forget about that as quickly as possible. Who talks about Iraq anymore? You don't even see anything about it on the news ever. I mean, well, you just, know, you we will. About, uh, it, some, and, some bombings once in a while, and uh, otherwise, I don't want to talk about it. Well, they're tired of it. They're, I mean, goddamn, we've been dealing with this since the Bush administration. Yeah. People are war weary and have been for a long time. But Even the same thing a- happened with Vietnam. I mean, you know, once all everyone was back home, you didn't really hear much about Vietnam yeah, until but the, Vietnam the uh, thing is a lot different because so many different people were affected. You had uh, far, far greater amount uh, of death. You had. Uh, because of the draft, so many people were affected. People have been tired about hearing about uh, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan for a long time just because they don't want to hear about it anymore. It's not yeah. because they're personally connected in some way and they want things to be over because they don't want their family and their relatives over there anymore. You know, it, I mean, that's it, the thing. You can bring home troops, but we have this has been an action fought by mercenaries. You have all these private contractors, all these people that are still going to be in these areas providing services it's uh to me it's 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 disingenuous yeah it's just not a sexy war it's not a sexy war like war like wwii you know that was a sexy war you know everybody came home they're kissing their girlfriends they're on the cover of life magazine and you know all we have for iraq is a hospital full of service people there in san antonio without any limbs that's what we got out of that one you know i think that I think they sh- we should get in there, and instead of installing a government, we should install things like Justin Bieber. <laughs> That's usually what it helps to uh, bring down a culture. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. You're right. That's true warfare, if you ask me. Well, I just think uh, that, um, you know, you, you just need to, to be gone. I mean, the, the whole idea was to, to, to uh, get rid of what was considered safe harbor for al-Qaeda, and that was the Taliban. Get rid of the Taliban and then do what? You try to restore what, uh, you know, the old leadership and bring in Karzai and look, man, uh, we got to quit playing this role because I don't think we can do it. And I, I, I you know, I, and that's the whole thing. At least Afghanistan, there was truly a coalition, unlike Iraq, where we didn't have a coalition. We just kind of twitched some arms and some people that owed us. And that was it. And people always downplay the amount of NATO troops that have died in uh, in Afghanistan. We just don't have the money to be the world police anymore. I mean, there's got to be a time that we just have to pick our own battles and get shit straight here at home. And I know that argument has been said time and time and time again, but we just have to stop being the world police. You know, that's here. here. Now, would you be willing to accept the risk of once in a while somebody with a bra bomb or an underwear bomb gets through and takes down a plane, a train? takes out uh, some kind of utility, would you be willing to accept that risk to, to just not... Uh, I, I think we're already there. I think that risk is, is going to happen, and we're still trying to be the world or police. Or do we, do we still get that through, our, you know, through the CIA actions, but uh, we don't have to worry so much about these huge military actions yeah. that really bring us nothing? Uh, well, put put them at the airport then, you know, put them at the train stations, put them at uh, whatever, you know, but, but get them out of Afghanistan, get them out of the those caves and wherever the hell else they're at right now. And yeah, I mean, if they want to please something, please the public transportation, you know, if Bring you're willing, home, maybe if you're willing to explode a perfectly beautiful, nice pair of tits with a bomb bra, <laughs> you're yep. a sick, you're a sick, sick fucker, man. And, you know, now the thing is, is you have to take your bra off just like your shoes before you go through. I, I wondered if, look, if the whole idea was is that you had to take your shoes off because of one guy, how come everybody doesn't have to drop trowel and take their, you know, show their underwear off? Is it because the body scanners, they say that's good enough and you don't have to worry about it anymore? I, I, 
I think it's I mean, because that's what it is. Supposedly security is so good. They they said that even if this, let's say, if somebody had been wearing the uh, underwear bomb uh, 2.0 or whatever, <laughs> um, that 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 chances are we would have detected it with our you know TSA would have caught on to it. I'm not I'm not buying that. I don't know. You know, with the new body scanners, I think that's going to promote things like tattoos, messages that you can get across as you're going through my, uh, you know, maybe thug life right here on the stomach. Yeah. So that when you're going through, people can read the messages on your, you know, when I go into the when I go through one of those, the, the only thing going through my mind is that I feel sorry for the person who has to look at my ugly body. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, I, actually, when you see what they see, I'm surprised John Travolta is in a TSA agent. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> because, you it's know, true. you go through and it's, uh, you know, it's penis on display there. I mean, it's. Uh, well, when I, when that, I come, when I come back that, from vacation, here's the deal. I always make sure I got at least a couple of skid marks uh, on the underwear there. So if they're going to go through it, they're going to have to work through it. And I hope you're wearing gloves because you're going to get a little little fecal matter under the fingernail oh, if you don't. your luggage? Yeah, yeah. You want to go through this? Have at it. Enjoy. I see you brought up the fecal theme again. Well, you have to, man. And, you know, we were talking <laughs> way too serious there for a second. I know, second. right? What the fuck is this, CNN? Can we move on to some <laughs> other topics? Oh, you mean me talking about politics and stuff like that? No, we needed to talk about it. I wanted to talk no, about it. No, because it's just one of these things. It just, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's like, uh, you know, that's the trouble. People don't want to talk about, you know, stuff that's really going on. They want to talk about, I don't know, uh, that, what's that other stuff you bring up, Drew? The... The reality shows, or yeah, the, yeah, you know that kind of nonsense. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. It's Beaver Kool Aid. Beaver Kool Aid. Hey, here's yeah. something that made the news in Austin. This is kind of a cool story because um, <clears throat> it kind of relates to everyone having a phone now with a camera on it. And there was uh, this thing called the Friday Night uh, Sword Sword Fights on the UT campus. You see this guy, this guy named Nick, who got hit by a Cap Metro bus. Friday night sword fight sounds like a bunch of dudes. Yeah, I know. It's kind of silly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this, this <laughs> dude steps out in front of a Cap Metro bus, survives. And um, anyway, this, this guy had been a driver for 21 years. He gets a ticket for running a red light. He's all in trouble. But the funny thing about it is the one camera that mattered was the one on the bus because they went back and looked at the records. And all of a sudden, the camera that was you know, facing forward showed he did not run the red light. Wasn't red. Wasn't red. He is uh, freed from it. So, I, you know, thank God, out of all this dumbass shit you see from everyone who's got a YouTube from something they shot on their phone, which this thing is so viral, if you've seen the video of this guy getting hit, it's terrible. I mean, this guy just gets nailed by this bus. How he lived, I don't know. But nevertheless, the camera that really told the story was the one on the bus there. Would you be willing to have, you know, like they do in uh, in England and, and increasingly in a lot of, you know, here in municipal areas in the U.S., were you willing to have cameras everywhere? Cameras everywhere so they monitor all this activity and uh, throughout the city. Are you willing to have that so you feel like big brothers there? Because they have them everywhere in England. Um is that the kind of thing that you'd like to have? As long as they don't have it on that one garbage bin between the alleys there, between 6th and 7th downtown where I usually take a piss because I can't find a bathroom. As long as they don't have it there, I'm okay. But it's all right. Yeah. No, I don't like, know. I, I hate cameras everywhere, man. I mean, you know. Because we, we had them at work, remember? We yeah. had them in the, corner, in the hallways at work. And, and at first, everybody was paranoid about them. And then after a while, you forget about them. Yeah. You just forget that they were there. But didn't you ever uh, flip it off every time you walked by it? I mean, I would always shoot at the bird. Like, who's watching? Here's one for you, you know? Well, at least you kept it in mind. I would think if there were cameras everywhere, I'd forget about them. Yeah. You know, in time. That one over the male stall in the the bathroom, though, that kind of bothered me a little bit. Well, that was your own camera, though, Lloyd. (laughs) The the fecal cam. So that was how many? I wonder how many cameras John Travolta has in his bathroom. (laughs) You know, if if this guy is not uh, guilty, once again, you get you get really screwed. You have two masseurs, two now said that uh, two that uh, John was just not really cool with him when it was time for the massage session. I thought uh, one guy says that John tried to get him to go and do a threesome with a Hollywood starlet who's been really hard up for a double penetration. Ooh. And, uh, you know, they described his, his penis about eight inches because he, he was erect. 
Because at one point, the one guy said, you know, John wanted he was just he was uh, he was on his stomach and spreading his legs <laughs> so that his penis and anus were uh, were highly accessible. That's called uh, the when, urban cowboy. Yeah, when he would, <laughs> when he, <laughs> and he'd flip over and wanted an abdomen uh, rub, but his but his penis was in the way, and the guy wasn't going to do it. But uh, uh, I don't know, it's a, there's two guys now, and they, but they are represented by the same attorney, which is interesting. But once again, if you if, they're saying the one guy, the first guy that came forward, he talked about an incident that happened in California, and the, and Travolta's attorney says we can prove uh, that John was not in California, the time in question. But nonetheless, people are going to forget. It's like we talked about the other day. They see you hit the dog, but they don't see you pick up the dog, take it to the vet, save its life. This is all that people are going to remember. So what are they That's calling this suit? I mean, was, is it like uh, a you know, jacking off in front of a masseur? He was uh, wanting, you know, he was wanting uh, special rubs. He didn't want the sheets on. They were too sticky. Wanted to spread his legs a lot. So what is he claiming that John rubbed him the wrong way? Is that what it is? Uh, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, uh, not, uh, sexual harassment. Oh, okay. Among other things, so. Why would John go for a guy? Doesn't he realize he can't have any gay marriage anywhere? I mean, he might as well just stay with the woman he's with, you know? Why do you want to go for a guy? I think what he's trying to do, he's trying to, I think what he's trying to do is every time he jerks off, he removes a couple of more thetans and becomes more clear. Maybe that's it. (laughs) Maybe that's something we don't know about. Maybe (laughs) Maybe that's what Tom Cruise was doing. Yeah, it's this higher echelon part of Scientology right. where, you, where you go to as many masseuse, uh, massage therapists in the city as you can and you try to get them to jerk you off. It's, it's the last, uh, it's the last uh, one of the last big things that you have to do in the Church of Scientology. I, I was just reading a little bit about this and the, the new accuser is saying that uh, Travolta had a, quote, strange demeanor and bloodshot eyes as he stripped naked on the 15th floor during the encounter. Now, what does that have to do with anything? The bloodshot eyes. I don't understand that. Is he saying he was drunk or high or? No, he had just taken a personality test. That's what happens to you when you take your free personality test at the Church of Scientology. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he just come off the black box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I heard him a lot. And, um, oh, you know, I mean, all this stuff is... Uh, they said that he the the masseuse walks in and that he's naked and he's got his hand on the on the table on the massage table and that he turned his he turned his head and arched his back and asked the guy if he would you know finish him off. I think that position is called "Look who's cocking." <laughs> <laughs> God almighty. It's Beaver Kool-Aid. Beaver Kool-Aid. So so speaking of the reality shows, uh they they announced the (laughs) shit reality reality shows. shows. (laughs) If there's not some shit conversation. I was speaking of Reality, reality, (laughs) not reality (laughs) shows. Shows. Uh, Right. But but Jermaine Paul is yeah. the guy who won the the latest reality show, The Voice. John, it, it's a you know if you don't watch that one, that's the that's the one that's taken over for American Idol and in, in, in the minds of many. And uh, but I think it's kind of bullshit that he wins because the difference between I think American Idol and The Voice is that The Voice actually goes out and looks for real singers. Yeah, and American Idol just takes any schmo off of the street. And the voice doesn't do that. And so the guy who won is Alicia Keys' backup singer. Yeah. Oh, so he's a professional. Yeah. 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 Not only is he a professional, he's, I think oh, that's just... pretty fucking professional. When Look, you're his back- whole thing to, was yes. he was tired of being a backup singer. He wanted to be front and center. I mean, that's the whole thing they you know, did for him, the, the entire show. And plus, it was Team Blake Shelton. I, I was pretty excited about that because, you know, Blake's a pretty handsome guy. He's a dapper Dan. I like that Blake Shelton. I he, like he's him. A, he's so. a sexy hunk, man. You know, so he's God nice bless guy. him. Yeah. But I, but I well, just think what that you talking about me, you know, come on, man. I know Miranda's gonna blow up, but that's okay. You know, <laughs> she got a GPT. It's just already happening. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, well I, you know, I thought it was a good episode. I didn't think he was going to win. I mean, I thought it was going to be the the guy that was on Christina Aguilera's team because he, uh, you know, he was doing opera. He was doing something out of the mainstream. And, you know, yeah. I, I said he had the voice out of the four that was the he, remaining one. He probably ones. did, but he came in fourth. Lloyd, he came in guy. fourth. Nobody I know. gave a crap about that So guy. that shows you what I, America wants right there. They want uh, they want an Alicia Keys backup singer to be there. Their no, I don't, I'm sorry, man. I think all this stuff is bullshit, and uh, it happens in California, doesn't it? So they go out and look for, uh, you know, it's very California, right? But we there's a lot of those people all over the world. City limits. No, they you audition. Know, you need to do something in another part of the country. They audition all over the country. So these people, there was even a couple of folks from Austin on there at the very beginning. So it's not all California. What, on The Voice? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they they have auditions, you know, and they're coming back for season three. Look, I, I kind of hope this guy would win, actually, because I, I kind of like Blake Shelton. I kind of like the way he'd coached his folks all along. I sure didn't want CeeLo to win, you know, with his cat and, you know, Adam Levine kind of. I, I like Maroon 5, but his personality kind of rubs me the wrong way. Christina Aguilera, eh. You so like was, Maroon 5? I, I, you Boy. know, like... You know, Let's there's a couple of songs. Hand over the man license, dude. There's, Come on, have it. <laughs> there's a hand couple of songs. Hand over the man license. You can't, <laughs> look, you can't just, you forget that people will see this. Maybe yeah. one or two. Uh, look, there's like, one or two songs mention, I like. I like Maroon 5. Yeah. I, you know what I like? I like, <laughs> look. <laughs> Drew, granted, you, Drew do you like of, Maroon 5 at all? I you like, got to respect them. I like them. a lot of R&B where guys... <laughs> don't really necessarily sound like guys you like a band sing. called dag they sound exactly like maroon five they just never had no, the same no, popularity no, no. same no, shit i like i like men who sound like men when they sing i yeah. mean this shows like the voice and only they're full of all these guys that want to sound like <laughs> christine aguilera or whoever i mean they i want to hear when was the last time you heard somebody singing like a freaking guy i guess daughtry did on American Idol, but yeah. I want a I want a man that sounds like a man. Everybody seems a bit effeminate, and they're into this kind of thing where it's like if I do this emo deal or emo pop or whatever, it's like uh, you know I, maybe I can maybe Adam Levine will date me. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand what the deal is of of just getting guys that sound like guys. Well, you should watch American Idol tonight. There's and all this other nonsense, and you know, and how can Blake Shelton work with some guy that's uh? That's an emo pop guy. Well, he's not. He's a backup. He's a well, backup. that guy chose Blake Shelton. That's yeah, the way he, the show he, works. He chose the coach, you know, and that was what was so ironic because everyone thought. Well, he, that's only that's only if more than one person buzzes in, right? And so more than one person right. buzzed in and he got his choice. Well, yeah, and everyone thought he would probably go for CeeLo because, you know, this guy was kind of a rhythm and blues thing and thought he'd probably go with CeeLo. And then he chose Blake and he, you know, even made it. I thought he was kind of arrogant at first, like, well, I'm going with you, even though, you know, he didn't say it, but even though I'll you're a you, country guy, I'm going to go with you, man. It's because the producer, here's what people don't tell you. The producers sit back and they go, listen, Jermaine, we think you're probably talented enough to get picked, and we think those guys are going to go ahead and turn around, but Christina's already got six people, and Blake's only got three, so we need you to choose Blake. We need we need a black guy on the country guys team, you know? And that's, what, well, that's the so problem that's with why all these reality happened. shows, is people forget that you've got all these producers that are sitting there right. telling people what to do and what to say and how to... In other words, like, we need one here, too, so that my producer would say, quit talking about this Afghanistan stuff, man. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> jump jump to <laughs> something talk else. About, uh, talk about Lloyd's bathroom more. <laughs> People like that. And, uh, um, excuse me, Mr. Lyle, is this fucking CNN or what? Well, yeah, speaking right. of speaking of someone that I bring up a lot, and it kind of relates to uh, The Voice. <laughs> yeah. There was, uh, there was a, uh, a shot of the crowd uh, on the night before the finals of The Voice. And there was Joel Osteen and his wife sitting in the audience there at The Voice. And I was like, hmm, now that's kind of strange. Why would Joel Osteen be at the finals of The Voice? And mm -hmm. so I did a little research on it. And sure enough, Mark Burnett, who is the producer of this and Survivor and several other shows, is going to do a reality show for Joel and Victoria coming up later on this year, I think. And I guess that's why he's out in the audience there. So I think they met because they get their mullets cut at the same place. <laughs> there... uh, Victoria, have you seen my cold cream? <laughs> I don't I don't know what my cold cream You know, cream even TMZ has been going after Joel because uh, he was spotted at the coast with his shirt off and they were saying, oh, wow, look at Joel. He's a hunk. You know, he's got the six pack going on. The guy's in, in oh, good sure. shape, you know. And so now TMZ is all over this with Joel with his shirt off. So. You see, and you want to know why my why my fucking head is exploding? That's what I mean. 
and we can't talk. I've got I got brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, and you can't talk about that because that's too CNN and too serious. And yeah, we want to talk about fucking Joel Osteen six pack. <laughs> Give me a break. I want my. I mean, I really. I want my. This this cult of celebrity and stuff is just killing me mm. on all these different things. You get the hell out of here. It's coming, man. It's get coming. The, you know, and the and the fact that you know about this, Lloyd. Well, I try to keep up with it. I got to pass on the news to the other folks out there who've missed out on that, it a couple no, days. The news. That's not news. What the hell is that? I just that just blows my mind. I'm the part of the trio that brings that shitty stuff to the to the show here, you know. And then I get Drew to laugh at me, and you, you know, that we recreate the scene from Scanners where Lyle's fucking head explodes here. So <laughs> it's Beaver Kool Aid. Beaver Kool Aid. And uh, my little girl gets her name changed tomorrow. Hey, hey look, at look at that. The Great. hearing is tomorrow in uh, presiding district court, downtown, Bear County Courthouse. Uh, I like this part. And, of course, this is as part of the standard form letter that they hand out to everybody, no matter what they're showing up in district court for. Uh, you must dress appropriately for the courtroom. Wow. If you're not dressed appropriately, you will not be seen by the judge. No. Now, remember, they have to let everybody know this, you know. And these are adults going. Do they, no. def do they define no, what tax. dressing appropriate is? What does that mean? No yeah, jeans no. or what? No. Tank tops, spaghetti straps, shorts, flip-flops, sandals, ripped or torn jeans, hats, revealing dress, clothing with obscene phrases or pictures, <laughs> or overly soiled clothing will be allowed in the courtroom. Also, all cell phones, pagers must be turned off prior to entering the courtroom, and no newspapers, food, drink, or chewing gum is allowed. Wow. And that would be, yeah, yeah. Uh, Not really fans of the beach, are they out there? No, <laughs> no, no tank tops, spaghetti straps, shorts, flip-flops, sandals. For a lot of people, this, this means I can't appear because this is my entire wardrobe. Oh, well, yeah. And, and, I, and, and you can't take a newspaper. It's like... Like, here comes C-U-M-S, the judge, and he got, you know. <laughs> That's how they keep liberals and progressives down. Right. right, they, right. they refuse to see you if you're not in a conservative uniform. And they, they've they gotten to the point where now you have to have some sort of identification to, in order to vote. It's all this big, gigantic plan of keeping you down. Because keeping you, can't, you down. You can't get a voter's registration card, and the only thing that you can afford are flip-flops, so you shouldn't be able to get your name changed or vote. That's what they're saying. Well, you saying. know, uh, once upon a time, and uh, probably last year, I think most people would have thought, you know, if I'm going to court for whatever reason, you know, I, it, it, is, it is court, and uh, I think I should be, you know, not be wearing, you know, shorts or, or ragged pants. But then I started thinking about this, and I'll wait a minute. This is the court of the people, is it not? That's right. You know, it seems to me that just because, you know, you're the judge and you think everybody should respect you and respect the office that you're in, uh, this isn't like a private establishment where they say, well, you can't eat here unless you're wearing a jacket. That's right. You know, this is court. I should be able, especially, you know, for what this is. I mean, this is not where I'm going into court and I'm trying to convince a jury or a judge to do a good thing for me or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me if I go in and I got spaghetti straps and I got whatever and I'm there uh, to, to get a name change for my kid, big deal. BFD. So I, I but I, I, I see these things all the time and I I'm rip I'm torn between the two because sometimes I see people who are just have absolutely no common sense they exercise when it comes to what they say, how they dress, you know, what they you know, these guys that have obscene shirts on or whatever and you're in a family event or whatever. I don't understand that at all. Uh, bumper stickers, whatnot. But then at the same time, I hate when people try to be my, you know, uh, my parent or my mother. And they have to see after me. I mean, they do this on, uh, you ever seen this when they do it on the local news? And they say, I want to take an umbrella with you this morning. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be kind of rainy. You want to slow it down a little bit and make sure those headlights are on. And we're going to, you know, uh, and it's like, uh, do I really need this from you? Yeah. Got your rubbers you on? To? Well, Who's it's like, really you know, in the, the end, the we, local news? we pay the bill, right? We pay that guy's. We pay that sure. guy's salary. Look, if my nine-year-old wants to wear a T-shirt that says, I fuck on the first date to wow. court, I think that he should be able to do that because we pay that we pay that guy his salary. He really doesn't have any business. Well, he, he should be able to do that, but you as a parent should be able to teach that, 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 that that's, not, that's not the thing to do. 
But that's, you know, what, that's what, what I'm I mean. saying. Sometimes, I mean, he would never do that, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. You should be able to wear well, see, whatever you want. There are a lot of people, though, that just don't have that, that social sense. They lack the social skill. And so that's the reason why you have to create, create all these stupid laws and regulations, because people just don't, you know, operate under a, a, just a, a certain little level of common sense. But Drew is from the eccentric in. state, though. Drew is from the eccentric state, you know, so he should be allowed to oh, do you that. Mean, as a you Texan? should be able to walk in in a diaper, in my opinion, and stand there and go to court if that's the, what the deal is. I think I Leslie understand. did do that one time at a, at a city council meeting. You know, I think he walked in with a diaper on. But, uh, yeah. you know, again, eccentricity. There's a certain level of decorum, and there's certain things that you do or don't do. I mean, I'm just saying that you, you can have a right to do a lot of things, but you don't necessarily exercise the right, right to flaunt yeah, sure. your ability to be able to do whatever. Sure. But, I mean, I just think it's funny that all these things have to be detailed to people because I can imagine, you know, with the trash fish around here that, <laughs> uh, you know, you have to, you know, that the people walk in, you know, looking like they just uh, got peeled off the street. So what are you going to wear? I'm not going to be there. Oh, what's Elva going to wear? She's going to wear a nice uh, dress. She'll wear and... something, yeah, yeah, not a, I mean, she'll just wear something appropriate. Pantsuit, maybe? Yeah. I know, right? It sounds like she needs to wear a jumpsuit. And, yeah, uh, get a pantsuit on from the 60s, man. You it'll know? be a nice, uh, sensible, sensible clothing. Yeah. Um, something that's seasonal. I think it'll be very appropriate. She's not wearing you know? white pumps now. It's not Memorial Day yet. And I told her, I said, lose the belly chain. So, yeah, uh, is that what it say? Does it say some, something in there like you can't wear no no white shoes after Labor Day? Is that on there too? Yeah, I don't know. If it's on there. You can't do that. No, usually you can only wear your white shoes after Memorial Day, right? Yeah, and that's then, right. And, and none after Labor Day. Yeah, is that yeah. Up? You can't wear white pumps before yeah, Memorial then, Day. And then after the after the, she goes to court, she's not done. Then she has to go to Austin. Wow. And do something in Austin to make it all official and get the new uh, the new uh, birth certificate and whatever. Yeah. What so a, there's a lot involved, but then uh, my kid's name will be changed. And I keep telling her, I keep telling Charlie, I said, I have never known anyone in my life who ever got a name change as a child or anyone who changed a child's name. And it's not a radical change, but still the fact that it's being changed, period. Never, ever, ever, ever. You're the only person I've ever that, known no, they, who did that as a parent. They dropped their nickname or they started using their first name instead of their middle name or vice versa, but not, nothing like this, so... Usually it's when you become, uh, you know, of a different religion, you know, like Muhammad or something like that. But, you know, um, yeah, I'm thinking about converting to Christianity and calling myself Cat Stevens. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what do you think? I like that. It's, it's, a, good. it's a wild world, baby. It's Beaver Kool-Aid. Beaver Kool-Aid. Here's another crazy one that happened around here. I had this up. Uh, this, I don't know if you heard about this in Austin or not. There was a uh, there was a blowout accident on uh, on uh, I think Interstate 37, south of town, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, two kids that were there were I think five people on the Ford Explorer. It's always a Ford Explorer when the when the tire blows out, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, anyhow, this thing flipped. Kids weren't wearing any kind of uh, seat belts naturally, uh, <laughs> so two of them flew out of the vehicle. The little boy gets run over by an 18 wheeler. Jeez. Um, so this mother, uh, two of her kids are dead. She has a nephew in there with her. She's in there and her 26 year old boyfriend. What does he do? He's the one driving. Yeah. All right. He had a blowout things, you know, and the kids unfortunately are dead. He runs. <laughs> he wow. takes off. I don't think they found him yet. Maybe he was they running to the convenience store to call the police. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sure. be right back. Uh, yeah, he takes off. Now, if that isn't, uh, you know, who are these people that, I mean, you had a, you, it was a blowout. It's not like you went and you were, you, was the guy gassed? What's the deal? But he runs and flees. It's like, we know who you are. I got to think some alcohol was involved there. But Definitely. regardless, I mean, you know, you're, you're in, you're in worse shape now that you fled the oh, scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It always it always used to puzzle me why people would steal cars in Hawaii. <laughs> like, I never understood that. I never understood why you would commit any kind of crime in Hawaii. Where the fuck are you going to go? He could have possibly got away with something had he hit the vehicle and, and took off. He was driving the freaking car. I mean, like you said, everybody knows who he is. He's just in hiding right now. There are certain things that just don't allow you, you know, you, you, you don't get to you don't get a reprieve. Mm hmm. You don't get a reprieve and uh, hit and runs and all that other pussy kind of stuff is just uh, totally wrong. And, 
you know, if you did it, you got to step up and say, hey, I did it. But so what run, would they charge this guy with? Obviously fleeing an accident, but I mean, uh, it wasn't really manslaughter. I mean, because it was an accident. The, the tire blew out. Well, I mean, the so tire what, blew. So he just be, he's just a, a bad person and just a pussy for leaving. I mean, but I bet well, the, the charges won't be that bad. You're leaving and you're leaving your girlfriend yeah. there with, with two dead, dead kids. children. Yeah. She's injured. Her nephew's injured. But this is this low life. You know, it has nothing to do with socioeconomics. It's just people that are just low life trolls that 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 populate the landscape. Yeah. Who, you know, and most of these people like Joel Osteen's stomach. And uh, they're big users of TMZ. <laughs> Maybe he was running because uh, he didn't want to miss the sale at Dillard's. Yeah, this I guess so. That's it. He had heard you know, of our, our Dillard segment, uh, what's happening at Dillard's, and he was going off that way. But, yeah. I mean, that's the, that, you know, I get to this point where I just want to, and, and, you know, I, wanna, I don't want to crack open a newspaper. I don't want to watch stupid TV news. I don't want to see anything that's online because it's all, you know, um, Beyonce, Beyonce was rocking a dress where you could see through and see her ass. Yeah. Was that appropriate for, for the Met? Was that, was that right? I mean, it's all this nonsense that I just want to shut down and get rid of. And, uh, you know, and then maybe we could, uh, I don't know, you, Drew, you have a banjo? <laughs> no, I was man, thinking about getting it. you a storm cellar for your birthday this year. You can just go in there, get you some yeah, good I mean, canned goods, lock yourself away from the rest of the world, and you won't have to worry about this shit anymore. Usually I get calmed by, you know, by the banjo. If I bring out the banjo, you know, I get I get soothed just a little bit. You know, I sold my my banjo uh, in uh, in Lloyd's garage sale last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So sometimes I go out for a ride on the unicycle and play my banjo, just kind of uh, you know chilling, eating that chilling. pork, pork and nobody, barbecue most sandwich. Most people honk and wave because where I live in Texas. Man. You're a very eccentric guy. They just, there he is. He's a crazy guy. It's like a it's like a special person around here that uh, always rides his bike to the grocery store. And, and if he does his, his, he has two bikes and he has one, he has a big floppy hat and he has his regular kind of uh, regular bike. And then he waves to everybody. I think people think that he's a preacher. And then he has a, a mountain bike. And if he rides his mountain bike, he doesn't, he, he makes sure he's off road and he wears an <laughs> army helmet. <laughs> I love that guy. But he won't ride on the street if he's got his mountain bike. He he rides. He rides. It's like saying, no, no, it's a mountain bike. Man. He's being true to his he, equipment, man. He rides yeah. off the road, you know, and his other bike, he rides on the road. But that's only if he's wearing his sombrero. So it's uh, well, I was it's wondering what the hell Steve Hahn had been doing lately, man. So there you go. Now no, I know. No, you're wrong there because it was exercise involved. Riding a bike. That's good shit. I will go to your party and I will tear it up. Really? Beaver Kool-Aid. You could look a man. Get it hard. With Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew. So go ahead, stick your head up your ass. <laughs>